Hi everyone! In this video we are going to take a look at a new affordable skincare brand that has recently launched for United States customers on Sephora's website and that brand is called The Inky List. I believe this was previously launched in the UK so it's not a brand new brand period but it is going to be pretty new for access um, when it comes to people in the United States looking to purchase these items. And this video will focus on comparing the price points, ingredients, and overall value of the skincare compared to our very well-known brand, The Ordinary. If you are interested in comparisons like this, I have previously done one comparing back-to-back -back the offerings from The Ordinary versus Good Molecules, which is Beautylish's affordable skincare brand that they launched. So if you have not seen that, I will link it in the upper right hand corner for you. I was kind of shocked, frankly, and pretty disappointed when I saw some uh, YouTubers really promoting Good Molecules as a brand without seeming to have looked at all into the actual ingredients that the Good Molecules has in their skincare and without regard to the actual value of those products. Um, so if you want to know the price comparisons and actually know what you're putting on your skin in terms of ingredients from the Good Molecules versus The Ordinary, that video will help you. And that's something very similar to what I'm going to do in this video. So if you are not already subscribed to the channel, please hit that red subscribe button. There is still a little bit of time to enter the giveaway for Max L Seed collection. Uh, you can go to that video for the details, but basically you have to be a subscriber and follow Allura Beauty on Instagram. The handle's in the description box. I will also put in the description box a link to where you can find the inky list to purchase uh, if you decide you want to purchase any of the items that I discuss in this video, as well as a link to Ebates or Go Cash Back, which is a more recent cashback company that I discovered, um, or whatever cashback program you want to use, do that. Doesn't matter which one it is, but it is the freest way possible to get an even higher discount on any sort of online purchases that you're making. If you do decide you want to purchase any of the Inky List stuff from Sephora, make sure you go see my prior video for the Sephora Spring Sale where you're going to get 20% off or 15% off depending on what status you are. Um, you should wait until that sale goes on because then you can get extra, an extra discount on anything you purchase. Someone said that they think The Ordinary is going to be an exception to that sale. I don't know where that information is coming from. As far as I know, they don't carve out any exceptions on the Sephora website, but maybe that is true. I, I don't know. And one last thing real quickly, if you are wondering what is on my eyes, I used the Urban Decay Game of Thrones eyeshadow palette. Um, I also did a video swatching all of the shades inside here if you are interested. On the cheeks for highlight, I used a shade from the new Endless Orgasm palette. And on top of my lip color for gloss, I also have the lip oil. So if you are interested in the swatched and read for that, there's also a video for that published for you to check out. Okay, let's get looking at this new brand, The Inky List. So what you should expect from this video, one thing is that I will take whatever items that I can find that both The Inky List and The Ordinary offer. So let's say they both offer an eye cream. I'll take the eye cream from The Inky List and the eye cream from The Ordinary and we'll do a head-to-head -head comparison to see which one is the better purchase overall. The second thing that I will also do along the way is just to point out some good aspects of the ingredients um, on whatever item we're talking about or if there are any bad or harmful ingredients to let you know those two. And I will also try to go through the items in the Inky List lineup that may not necessarily have corollaries in the Ordinary's offerings so that you can make a decision about whether that is a product that you would be interested in based on the ingredients. Now, to be clear, this is not a video where I am reviewing these 19 products after having used them. In fact, I have not purchased or used or touched any of these items. Now, some of you may think, well, how can you review it without ever using it? Well, I am reviewing the price 
given the amount of product you're getting, and I am assessing the product based on the ingredients. Um, skincare is not like makeup in the way where a lot of it is subjective. Like, do I like this lip color? Do I like shimmering versus matte things? Do I like uh, working with cream products or do I only like powder products? Skincare is mostly about the ingredients. Are they effective? What do they do for your skin? How effectively do they do X thing for your skin? Um, so some people feel like skincare is just, well, I like this cream or I like, you know, this serum. Okay, that is that is your prerogative, but skincare is supposed to have a an effect on your body. <laughs> um, as opposed to makeup that is mostly cosmetic and just sits on top of your skin and is just for how it looks temporarily while it's there versus skincare that is supposed to have an actual physical effect on your skin whether in the short term or, or over a long period of time. So I would say 90% of skincare is about the actual ingredients um, as opposed to what color is the product, do I like the texture of the product. Now 10% of it may be about um, texture. You may, some people may want something that is thicker and heavier. Other people may say, I hate that. I need something thin and gel-like or weightless. So to be very clear, I cannot give you an opinion on the texture of something. If you do want that information, the wonderful, wonderful resource on YouTube that I think you should go check out if you're not already subscribed to her. Um, the channel's called Gothamista. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, uh, but she does wonderful skincare videos also. And the Inky List provided her, I think, all 19 items in their line for her to actually test out and feel. So she can give you a lot of insight into the, um, you know, the, the viscosity of something or how well it may play with other products, how it feels on the skin, things like that. I am going to concentrate more on the value and the ingredients in these products. All right, first let me very briefly introduce you to the Inky List uh, more than I ha already have. We know it's an affordable skincare brand. It's available through Sephora to purchase. I don't think that they have it in brick and mortar stores. I think it's an online thing, at least for now. And the short blurb about the brand on Sephora's website is bringing you the hottest ingredients in skincare at affordable prices. The Inky List's mission is simple, helping you navigate the complex world of beauty jargon to find skincare that works for you. So again, very straightforward. You can tell from the packaging, it's like the ordinary, very simple simplistic, nothing flashy. The products it looks like um, at most expensive is going to be $12.99. That's the, oh no, there is, there are two products that are $14.99. So the most expensive thing in the line is $14.99 all the way down to, it looks like $7, nope, $6.99. Okay, let's start our head-to-head -head comparison. With the first product, we're gonna start with a caffeine eye cream. This is actually something I missed when comparing with the Good Molecules because the Ordinary's caffeine eye cream comes in a bottle just like everything else, so I didn't see that it was actually an eye cream, but the Ordinary apparently does have an eye cream. Let's start with the Inky List. The Inky List eye cream product is called the Caffeine Eye Treatment. It retails for $9.99. The Ordinary's eye cream is called the Caffeine Solution 5% plus EGCG. It retails for $6.70. So on pure price alone, the Ordinary is cheaper. In terms of the amount of product you get, you get 0 .0, I'm sorry, 0.5 ounces with the Inky List Caffeine eye cream. And with the Ordinary's Caffeine Solution, you get a full ounce of product. So when you account for the double amount of product you get compared to the Inky List, the savings you get with the Ordinary is amplified even more. So it's much cheaper per ounce to buy the Ordinary's eye cream if you assume that the quality of the ingredients is the same. But let's look at that. Let's go on to the ingredients list. So here are the ingredients in the Inky List Caffeine Eye Cream. Now immediately what we see, we start out with glycerin, a nice humectant. Then we also have included some other emollients or hydrating items like jojoba esters. You also see in there squalene and caffeine obviously because it's a caffeine eye cream, but squalene is a great agent for the skin also. You have other antioxidants like soybean extract, radish root ferment, 
You also have hyaluronic acid. So it looks like overall you have a pretty good um, rounded eye uh, cream from the Inky List. In comparison, the Ordinary's eye solution is more predominant when it comes to caffeine. Now, if you look at some research, some research uh, indicates that a high amount of caffeine can actually be a bit irritating to the skin. So that might be something to watch out for as a potential irritant uh, if you have more sensitive skin. But in more, uh, but in smaller amounts, it can have an antioxidant effect. So strangely, the fact that The Ordinary's much more affordable solution has much more caffeine in it, there might be a risk of some sensitization for some people. So you might actually, uh, if you're concerned about that, want to go with the Inky List, which has less in terms of the amount of caffeine in it. But moving on with The Ordinary, you also have glycerin, hyaluronic acid, soybean extract, urea. There's also lactic acid. So again, a fairly well-rounded product, but the amount of the caffeine is a concern. So on this one, I can't really say that there is a winner one way or the other. Personally, I would probably dole out more money for less product and get the Inky List because it is also extremely well-rounded, but it is well-rounded with a lot of different balanced antioxidants and emollients, whereas The Ordinary's very heavy caffeine amount uh, does pose a pretty good risk of some sort of irritation. Um, so I would go with the Inky List because I get that caffeine, but not in an amount to make me concerned, and I get a bunch of other benefits too. So maybe I'll change what I said from before, and on this one, I'm gonna say that the Inky List wins. All right, next, let's look at their hyaluronic acid offerings. First, we'll start with the Inky List Hyaluronic Acid Serum. This retails for $7.99. On the ordinary side, we have their hyaluronic acid 2% plus B5. That retails for $6.80. So once again, pure numbers, the ordinaries cost less. In terms of amount, with the Inky List, you receive one full ounce. And with the ordinary, you receive one full ounce. So you are paying less per ounce, obviously, for the ordinary's hyaluronic acid. Let's look at the ingredients with the Inky List offering. We have a good amount of glycerin. We again see that radish root ferment, which seems to be a common occurrence in the products for the Inky List. We also have hyaluronic acid, of course we should expect. We also have sodium hyaluronate. With The Ordinary, you see, again, sodium hyaluronate immediately in the ingredients list. You see a sodium hyaluronate cross polymer, panthenol. You also see the glycerin. You also have some citric acid in there. And of course, as the name suggests, you have the vitamin B5, which is listed on the ingredients as panthenol. So overall, both of these items, if you look at the ingredients list, these tend to be a little bit more simplistically formulated, but that's common to both the offering from the Inky List and the Ordinary, so that doesn't really distinguish one over the other. I will say from having used the Ordinary's hyaluronic acid before, it can leave a little bit of a tacky finish Nothing that someone visibly would notice on you, but if you're someone who really cares about that kind of thing and you do touch your skin and that would bother you psychologically, then that is something to consider. You may wanna uh, dole out the very, very small amount of money more to try out the Hyaluronic Acid Serum from the Inky List instead, because in terms of formulation, formulation, these both offer um, kind of this, the same amount in terms of ingredients for your skin. So at the end of the day, we'll probably call this one a tie. Next up, let's take a look at their retinol offerings. The Inky List has a product called Retinol Serum. It retails for $9.99. Now, with The Ordinary, there is a whole list of different retinol products that they offer. They offer several products that combine retinol and squalene. They also have um, this product, which I am going to use as the comparison, which is the Grand Active Retinoid 2% Emulsion, which apparently used to be called uh, Advanced Retinol 2%. 
So that is the one that I'm going to use to compare because I think it's the most similar, but just know that if this is not something you want to use from The Ordinary, there are one, two, three, four, five other retinol-based offerings from The Ordinary with retinol that is in various percentages based on your tolerance and combined with uh, different other ingredients based on what you might be looking for. With the retinol serum from The Inky List, you receive one ounce, and with the uh, retinoid, the Grand Active Retinoid 2% emulsion from The Ordinary, you receive a one fluid ounce. And did I forget to say how much the one from the ordinary cost, it costs $9.80. So um, on this front, they're virtually the same. There's a 19 cent difference, same amount, almost the same price. When you look at the ingredients for the Inkyless Retinol product, we uh, lead the way with water and glycerin. You also get some squalene in there, which is great. Again, you have that soybean extract. Then it's actually towards the latter half of the ingredients list when we start to see our retinol-based products. first get hydroxy pinacolone. No idea if that's how you say it. Retinoate, retinoate. Whatever that form of retinol is that they are offering that they say is like a less irritating form of the retinol, apparently because it's not acid-based. That ingredient is immediately followed by retinol um, and then followed by some uh, soybean-based ingredients. Again, seeing that radish root ferment also getting hyaluronic acid. So again, you're getting a mixture of good ingredients. Overall, you're getting 1% uh, of the retinol and 0.5% of the gran active retinoid. Now, when we go over to the ordinary, we again start immediately with water and glycerin. You more quickly see that um, retinoid uh, ingredient immediately again followed by the retinol so very similar to what you see in the inky list but you're getting more of the retinol based uh, ingredients with the ordinary you're getting some soothing plant extracts so again you're getting multiple benefits from the product but overall you are as the name suggests getting two percent as opposed to the 1.5% from the Inky List. At the end of the day, given the very similar ingredients and the same amount of product and very similar price, I think this one's also a tie. Um, I have actually very recently purchased this product from The Ordinary, so I have not yet been able to test it out. I have read that it can have kind of a grainy texture, which may not be that favorable for people cosmetically or superficially to deal with that kind of grainy texture. So on that front, you may want to try the Inky List product instead. All right, let's move on to the Inky List Multibiotic Moisturizer. Um, this retails for $12.99. Now, interestingly, the corollary is the Ordinary's Buffet. This one doesn't pop out to you immediately as a corollary to the Inky List because it doesn't have in its name anything that suggests it has probiotics in it, but the buffet actually does have a probiotic complex, so I think this is probably the closest comparison that we can make. So going back to the Inky List Multibiotic Moisturizer, you receive one ounce with that product and with the buffet, you receive also one ounce. And the buffet is $14.80. So actually you are paying less with the Inky List product. Now what's really nice about the ingredients from the Inky List Multibiotic Moisturizer are that you start with water and then you are followed by um, inulin and inulin is a prebiotic. Um, and then later down the list, you will see the probiotics that are listed in the ingredients. And the reason that's important is because the prebiotics and the probiotics work together. The prebiotic serves as a source of energy for the probiotic. And it looks like the research on exactly how much of a benefit you get from probiotics applied topically to the skin as opposed to ingesting them um, is still in kind of the early stages. So there isn't as much conclusive research, research telling us how beneficial they are for the skin when applied on top um, and how effective they are or if they are, period. The research apparently is kind of promising, but we just don't know for sure. Um, but in any case, if that is something that interests you, uh, this would be the product for you. We also have in the ingredients squalene or squalane. 
you have yogurt powder that's included in there, sodium hyaluronate, and you also have citric acid. With The Ordinary's Buffet, you start out with water and glycerin, immediately followed by the probiotic complex, which in the buffet is the lactococcus ferment. The buffet also includes glycerin and other peptides. This is a product that I have purchased and used up multiple bottles of, um, and it is probably one of The Ordinary's best products overall because it's not as one note or simplistic as most of the products are in The Ordinary's line. So it is multifaceted, it contains a lot of good ingredients. Um, so you definitely can't go wrong with The Ordinary's Buffet, but I am intrigued by the Inky List Multibiotic Moisturizer, A, because we have the prebiotic immediately followed by the probiotic. You get a lot of other definitely good ingredients for the skin too. And it seems to have more of like a cream texture to it, whereas the Buffet is like a, definitely a gel texture. Um, and again, it's not that it's sticky on the skin, but it doesn't sink in and become one with the skin necessarily. So I will definitely be picking up the multibiotic moisturizer as um, one of the things that I will try out first when purchasing from the Inkey List. So given the only small difference in price point um, and the very good ingredients shown in both of these products, I'm also gonna call this one a tie. All right, next, moving on to the Inky List Lactic Acid Serum, which retails for $12.99. The Ordinary also has uh, several lactic acid offerings, but the one we're gonna compare because it's closest is the Lactic Acid 10% plus HA, which is hyaluronic acid, which retails for $6.80. So a pretty big price difference there. The Inky List product gives you one ounce and The Ordinary's uh, gives you one ounce too. So that price difference is definitely made Maintained, you're getting about double the amount of product for the price. But let's look at the ingredients. So with the Inky List, we have um, overall you get a 10% lactic acid, which is the exfoliant. Um, and it says you also get a low molecular hyaluronic acid, 1%, which is supposed to help hydrate. And the first ing two ingredients you see in the Inky List product is water and lactic acid. You also get some glycerin to help hydrate of course, sodium hyaluronic, which I just mentioned. You have some castor oil in there um, and some uh, plant-based antioxidants also. But a pretty straightforward ingredients list. With The Ordinary, you are also getting that 10% lactic acid, starting out with water immediately followed by the lactic acid, then immediately followed by the glycerin. You also have the sodium hyaluronate cross-polymer included. Again, plant-based extracts. So these two formulations are actually pretty similar. An interesting thing that I read on Beautypedia about the lactic acid from The Ordinary was that it contained a fragrant ingredient and that appeared not at the end of the ingredients, but more towards the end of the ingredients. But when I look today on The Ordinary's website, I don't see that ingredient listed. And The Ordinary does make changes and updates to their ingredients based on customer feedback when it comes to texture and other types of feedback. So it looks to me like they have taken that ingredient out. So I don't think that there should be that same concern about that irritating fragrant ingredients. Uh, currently in the formulation, so that's a good thing. I think that based on the very similar ingredients um, and the quite drastic uh, difference in terms of price, The Ordinary is gonna win on this one. All right, let's move on to vitamin C. The Inky List has a vitamin C cream that retails for $9.99. The Ordinary has multiple different vitamin C offerings in different uh, percentages, in different uh, form factors. So again, they will give you more flexibility in terms of being able to choose from multiple different products to get your vitamin C, but the one that goes face-to-face -face with the, the Inky List best is The Ordinary's vitamin C suspension 30% in silicone and you get one ounce with the ordinary and you get one ounce with the inky list and guess what the ingredients for the products is exactly the same so it's dimethicone ascorbic acid which is where your vitamin C is coming from uh, this polysilicone 11 ending with PEG or PEG 10 dimethicone. Exactly the same ingredients in the same order. So 
with them offering you the same amount of product, the Ordinary is going to win. Why? Because the Ordinary's product is $6.80 for the one ounce, whereas the Inkylist is $9.99 for the ounce. Next, let's look at the Inkylist Beta Hydroxy Acid, which retails for $10.99 versus the Ordinary's Salicylic Acid 2% Solution, which retails for $5.30. So immediately we see the pretty significant price difference. Uh, now, The Ordinary does have pro several products that include BHA or salicylic acid in them, uh, but they are either combined with other ingredients that make them not as comparable. So these are the two that I think are the most comparable in each line. You get one ounce with the Inkyless products and you get one ounce with the Ordinary products. So clearly in terms of pure price point, you get a lot more for your money with the Ordinary. When it comes to formulation, when we start with the Inkyless, we see that we get the salicylic acid as the fourth ingredient. And in terms of the amount overall you're getting of the BHA or beta hydroxy acid, it says that you are getting 2% salicylic acid. You are also getting some zinc, uh, it's a zinc salt compound, and you are getting some uh, hyaluronic acid in there also. When it comes to the Ordinary's salicylic acid product, uh, we actually start more with the uh, witch hazel, which is the second ingredient listed there, um, which if you use it very consistently, if you use it a lot, uh, I know people love witch hazel for the skin, but there are studies that show that it is not a great item to use consistently and frequently on the skin. And basically the reason is that while witch hazel itself is supposed to be a good plant antioxidant with soothing, soothing properties, the way that it is, uh, I guess, handled, manufactured, and then put into products that we purchase, it becomes much more of an astringent ingredient, strips the skin, it's very alcohol-based. So even though witch hazel is supposed to be this very good ingredient for our skin, the way that we are actually consuming it and we have it in our products is not a great ingredient for the skin. So you should be aware that it's very prevalent in the Ordinary's product. Of course, we have the salicylic acid in there. We also have some citric acid, which is good. So at the end of the day, this one is a little hard for me to call because there is such a big price difference. But at the end of the day, the amount of unnecessary witch hazel that's in the Ordinary's product, um, I, I, at the end of the day, I'm gonna give this one to the Inky List. It is significantly more expensive per ounce, but still at the end of the day, it's only $11, which is really good uh, when you just think about how much skincare usually costs, even skincare at the drugstore, and you are avoiding any of that potentially uh, high concentration of witch hazel, still getting your salicylic acid, which is really the hero ingredient that you want. Next up is the Inky List Rose Hip Oil, retailing for $10.99 versus the Ordinary's 100% organic cold pressed rose hip seed oil retailing for $9.80. So not a huge pr price difference there. And for both of them, you're getting the one ounce of product. And guess what? This is really easy to decide because both of them contain 100% of the rose hip seed oil. So if you're going purely on price, then the Ordinary is gonna win. But given that the price difference is pretty small, um, I'm again gonna call this one a tie. Then we have the Inky List Glycolic Acid Toner retailing for $10.99 versus the Ordinary's Glycolic Acid 7% Toning Solution retailing for $8.70. Again, less uh, in terms of pure price point for the Ordinary. With the Inky List Glycolic Acid Toner, you receive 3.4 ounces. With the Ordinary's Glycolic Acid Toning Solution, you receive eight ounces. So a lot more product for less money when you look at the Ordinary's toning solution. Let's look at the ingredients. You have water immediately followed by the glycolic acid. You also have a good amount of witch hazel, which as I already stated, I think is concerning, especially if you're combining that astringent quality with the glycolic acid, which already acts as an acid on your skin, and if you're not used to it, can be tingling and mildly irritating. The other major red flag is uh, kind of in the middle, you see alcohol listed. 
which I have no idea why that would be included. Um, and I'm super surprised because I didn't see alcohol in any of the other ingredients that the Inky List offers. So I really don't know why they've included that in there. That is definitely a no. Um, even if this on all other counts were less expensive, giving you more product than the ordinary, I would automatically say do not spend or waste your time purchasing this item because of that. When we jump over to the Ordinary's uh, glycolic acid toner, we have water again immediately followed by the glycolic acid. And similarly, it seems a bit concerning because it's then immediately followed by rose water. Now I know in my previous email, there are several people who get all up in arms saying rose water is a miracle ingredient and it's not an irritant. If you have done for yourself the scientific research and you feel like rose water poses no risk of irritation to your skin, then that is the adult decision that you can make. Um, the studies that I'm seeing being cited that actually test these ingredients say that while there are potentially beneficial um, aspects of something like rose water, the way that there are many antioxidant and beneficial uh, aspects of a lot of different plant-derived ingredients or extracts, with rose water, there is also a fragrant component, and not just a fragrant component, but a fragrant component that is irritating. Now, there are great other things in the ingredients list. For example, um, aloe leaf water, which can help soothe the skin. Similarly, glycerin. You have a lot of other fruit extract or leaf extracts. You also have citric acid. Those are all very good beneficial things, but when you start out the ingredients list, with the glycolic acid immediately followed by something that is not just a plant extract, but a fragrant plant extract. Uh, that's something for you to consider in terms of whether you wanna purchase this product or not. So to be honest, <laughs> at the end of the day, regardless of the amount you get and the price you get, given the ingredients, I wouldn't purchase any of these. Moving on to the Inky List Alpha Hydroxy Acid Serum, retailing for $10.99, compared to, I guess the closest thing would be the Ordinary's AHA 30% plus BHA 2% peeling solution. The reason why I say it's kind of a comparison, obviously because the peeling solution from The Ordinary also contains BHA. It's not just focused on the AHA. In addition, the uh, peeling solution from The Ordinary is a different kind of uh, usage than the serum will be from the Inky List. The peeling solution from The Ordinary, it's the one that looks like blood when you put it on your skin um, and it is a, dark, a deep red in the bottle. Um, that is meant to be worn as a mask. So at maximum like 10 minutes on your skin and then you need to wash it off. Whereas the serum from the Inky List obviously is something that you can wear on your skin for a long period of time. So this comparison is not at quite as one-to-one -one or head-to-head, -head, but for what it's worth, uh, the Inky List is $10.99 for that one ounce. The Ordinary's is $7.20 for the one ounce. For the Inky List, you are getting 10% uh, of the alpha hydroxy acid from the fruit acid. What concerns me about this is there are several citrus fruit extracts. For example, there is orange fruit extract and lemon fruit extract listed in the middle of the ingredients list. Now, when you have an, a citrus fruit oil that is in a product that is absolutely a big no-no. Again, I know a lot of people who are more about, um, you know, quote unquote, natural ingredients. Uh, they speak high praises of oils like that. But the truth is, is that they're extremely fragrant and they're extremely photosensitizing. Um, you will sometimes actually see people who, um, let's say they've been like squeezing lemons and they get lemon juice on their hand and then if they go out into the sun and get it exposed to sun, you can get uh, what looks like burns on your skin from the uh, oils, from the, the fruit juice being on your hand. So when you then put that into skincare, it's not, it's not a beneficial thing for your skin. Now, when I see fruit extract instead of the fruit oil, that's less concerning because you're taking the extract, you're not actually just taking the oil from the plant and including it in there, but, um, and it can have some antioxidant properties, but 
the even even the orange fruit extract and lemon uh, fruit extracts can still be sensitizing. So that is something that I would just personally recommend that you stay away from. On the flip side, with the Ordinary's peeling solution, uh, you obviously get a lot more of the AHA, and of course you also are getting the BHA included, which isn't in the Inculus product. The very first ingredient is the glycolic acid. Now that can be both a good and a bad thing in having personally used multiple bottles, bottles of this peeling solution. And for someone who uses a lot of strong potent ingredients on our skin, like retinoids, glycolic acids, all that kind of stuff, um, I can attest to you that even with my very not sensitive skin, this stuff tingles. Um, so I can imagine for someone who is not used to using these kinds of ingredients on a daily basis on their skin, how this would just be way too much for the skin. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, it is, can be very effective, but on the other hand, it can just be way overboard for some people. You also have included lactic acid, like I said, the salicylic acid, citric acid. So if your skin uh, is used to ingredients like this, at the end of the day, I will definitely say that the Ordinary's product wins, but with the caveat that this really isn't a one-to-one -one comparison, they're really products that are supposed to be intended to be used different ways. But that said, I would just on its own not be trying out or using the Inculus Alpha Hydroxy Acid Serum period because of the issues in the ingredients. And last, thankfully, we're ending on a relatively easy one. Starting with the Inky List, we have their Squalane Oil that retails for $11.99. And from the Ordinary, their 100% plant-derived Squalane, uh, which retails for $7.90. Each of them gives you an ounce of product, so clearly the one from the Ordinary wins. They are both 100% plant-derived. That means that the only ingredient in there is the Squalane for both of these products, so very clearly and easily the one from The Ordinary is going to win. So overall, when I compared these, going into this, because I was mostly just looking at the prices and the amounts before diving in depth into the ingredients list, I thought The Ordinary was going to win most of the time, but I'm actually surprised at um, how often I would prefer the inky list based on the ingredients. Um, and I, that kind of makes me happy because this provides a new, very uh, affordable and good option overall uh, when it comes to a brand that is giving you skincare at an accessible price. Of course, you have some items that are more problematic that I wouldn't purchase regardless of what price they were or how cheap they were. But overall, I am kind of excited about there being a true competitor to the ordinary out there potentially, whereas I just think that Good Molecules is not a company that I am interested in supporting or purchasing, you know, 90% of the products that they offer because of the problems with the ingredients in them. But on that note, let's go over some of the rest of the products that I didn't find kind of one-to-one -one comparisons in with The Ordinary. It's totally possible that I missed something in The Ordinary's line that could be one-to-one -one compared with the items that I'm about to talk about. Um, and I'm gonna be a little more brief in this section of the video, um, but from what I could see, I wasn't able to find one-to-one -one comparisons in The Ordinary. So we'll start with the CoQ. So let's start with the Inculus Q10 serum, retailing for $6.99 giving you one ounce of the product. So this will contain the Q10, which is supposed to be a good anti-aging ingredient. It also includes the squalene, so you seemingly have a nice anti-aging serum. The Inculus also has a collagen serum for $10.99, again, giving you one ounce. The collagen amino acids in the ingredients can help to moisturize the skin, make it look more smooth. And in the ingredients, you also are getting glycerin. Again, you're getting that radish root ferment. Uh, you're getting hyaluronic acid. So you're getting more than just the straight collagen. There's a salicylic acid cleanser that is $9.99. Uh, you get half an ounce. Of course, you're going to have uh, the salicylic acid in the product. The thing that I'll say about this kind of product is I think that I've said this many times. I think that cleansers are the least important part of your uh, makeup routine as long as it effectively removes whatever you're wanting it to remove. Um, even with fragrance being in uh, your cleanser, I'm not as concerned about that just because whatever is in the product is on your skin for a matter of seconds and then you wash it off. So whether it's good or bad, 
the effect that it's going to have is minimal because it doesn't have time to sit on the skin and either irritate it or uh, change the skin to have positive effects. So, you know, if you want, if you want to try this out, uh, all, all the more power to you. Um, it's certainly not going to break the bank. I think $10, although for half an ounce is actually a little bit more on the expensive side. Uh, I'm sure you can find cheaper, uh, cheaper options at the drugstore for a lot more product. The Inculus has a Hepta peptide serum for $14.99 for one ounce, one of their most expensive products that they offer. It says that this is a rich serum that is supposed to help with the appearance of crepey skin. I actually don't don't know what the research says about the uh, main ingredient that is the supposed to be the star of this product says. So I do know that it contains some good ingredients in the ingredients list, things like uh, citric acid, glycerin, things like that. But in terms of the grand sum heptapeptide 7 that they're saying is the ingredient that actually helps visibly reduce the appearance of the creepiness in the skin, I don't know what the research says about that. The polyglutamic acid, which is another curious offering from the Inky List, this retails for $14.99, again, one of the most expensive products they offer. But what's interesting about this product is the polyglutamic uh, acid is supposed to be a really, really good hydrator for the skin. So glutamic acid is an amino acid um, that is supposed to help with skin hydration. And so I'm assuming with po polyglutamic poly being multiple, more than one, um, that you know, this it, it, it's basically supposed to be a super hydrator for the skin. Um, and they say that it holds four times more moisture than even hyaluronic acid. So if you do suffer from very dry skin, this might be a great product for you to check out. The Inky List has a turmeric moisturizer, one ounce at $12.99. Um, turmeric is a great ingredient for the skin. It serves as an antioxidant. It serves as a soothing ingredient. This formulation also includes vitamin E, uh, squalene, coconut oil. There's actually a good amount of that. Um, oat kernel flour, oat kernel oil, palmitic acid, a bunch of great things in this formula. So another one that I will probably be picking up. The Hemp Moisturizer, $12.99 for one ounce. This also has green tea extract, which is a great plant-based antioxidant and soothing agent. You have omega-3s, you have glycerin, coconut oil, another promising looking offering. And I think this is the last one. I'm hoping I covered all 19 of the products the Aquilus offers. We have the Kaolin Mask for $6.99 and giving you 1.7 ounces. This is targeted more towards people with oily skin or have acne prone skin. The first three ingredients are water, kaolin, and glycerin, which is great. Kaolin is like a clay based ingredient that um, helps to kind of honestly to dry out the skin, i.e. combat oiliness. So it's great as a mask because that means you're gonna use it maybe once a week, maybe twice a week. Um, so it's not something that you should use on a daily basis because it can really dry out the skin. But for people with oily skin, it can definitely help combat the uh, level of oiliness they experience. You also get sunflower seed oil in the ingredients. You're getting aloe leaf juice. So we are ending on another promising offering from the Inky List. Okay, I really hope that this video was helpful to you. If you liked this video and it was helpful, please, if you have a couple seconds, give it a thumbs up and share. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch a video like this, especially a long one like this. These really take a lot of work. These are the most time consuming videos, but I find them to actually be the most interesting also. So uh, thank you again for watching and I really hope that it's something that was useful to you. I'll see you in the next video.